And here we are looking at planet Earth. Now, if I hold down shift and up arrow, I can uh, look around different parts of the Earth. I can use directional arrows to uh, get me around. And it's pretty clear that uh, we here in North America, well, for one thing, there's a whole lot of light in the eastern United States and not a whole lot in the Rocky Mountains, which is kind of interesting. And not a whole lot in Canada, for you Canadians, eh? But uh, it's because I'm making the video at 7.46 at night, Central Standard Time, on January 21st. But you can see when it's nighttime for us, in uh, North America, the sun is, well, it's, it's just beginning to rise somewhere else on Earth. For instance, in India. Here in eastern India, the sun has just risen, and uh, so it's morning over there. Well, as we look at planet Earth, we could zoom in, and that would be more of the topic of planet Earth, but I'd rather zoom out. So, as I do that, Earth gets rather small, and before you know it, we see that there's this partner over here, and uh, that's the moon. If I hit M, it will give us a name for the moon. If I hit P, it will name the planet, and here in Celestia, we can see that uh, the moon and the Earth are in close proximity. As I turn on the orbits with the letter O, it's clear that the moon is orbiting Earth, and uh, in fact, I can go to the moon. So what I'll do is I'll hit enter, type moon, and then just G for go, and that's going to take us to the moon. Now, once we've arrived at the moon, we see some interesting things. For one thing, it has a day and a night just like Earth. There is a side that is facing the sun that is daytime. In fact, during the day on the moon, it is brutally hot because there's no atmosphere to temper the extreme temperatures from uh, the radiant energy from the sun. At nighttime, it is brutally cold because there's no atmosphere to hold the heat uh, from the daytime. So, as we look at the moon, we see, I'm going to turn off these orbits there, uh, we see that the moon has significant craters. It has some, some uh, what look like seas and what look like mountains. There is a Mount Olympus, there is a Sea of Tranquility, and many of these geographic features, or lunographic features, I guess, have been around for a long, long time, possibly from meteors and asteroids hitting, hitting the moon and uh, creating dust storms and creating large craters. And since there is no atmosphere, there is no erosion on the moon. So uh, a crater that has been there for 20,000 years will be there for the next million years. And uh, and if an a astronaut walked on the moon, his footprints are still there because there's no wind to blow them away. So there's the moon. Uh, as I retreat away from the moon by holding down function and the right arrow, I notice the moon gets small. Pretty soon there goes Earth. And it begs the question, what is our solar system like anyway? So I'm going to go to the center of our solar system. According to Nicholas Copernicus, our solar system has its center around the sun. This is called the heliocentric model for the solar system. So I'm going to type sun. I'm going to type G to go to the sun. And there's the sun. Now I can look around the different parts of the sun. Uh, you might see sunspots or solar flares, but it's a, it's a bright star. It's the closest star to us, and it's the reason why we can sustain life on Earth. It's our source of heat and energy. Well, as I move away from the sun, pretty soon the sun becomes a much smaller dot. And in fact, as I look at the sun and turn on some orbits, it becomes clear that there are a series of objects orbiting the sun. Now, these first four orbits, I'll name them. You learned the names of these planets a long time ago. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. These are lumped together in a special way. These four planets are called terrestrial planets. Terra, referring to the Earth. And uh, they're called terrestrial because they are Earth-like. 
Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all made of rock. They are rather small, as planets go, and they have very few moons. In fact, Mercury does not have any moons. Venus does not have any moons. Earth has just one moon. We call it moon. And Mars has two moons, Deimos and Phobos. And uh, so that's, uh, that's the way terrestrial planets work. They're small, they're rocky, and they have very few moons, but they're close to the sun. In fact, uh, if you were standing on the surface of Mars or Venus and looking at the sun, the sun would look fairly similar to how it looks on Earth. But as we zoom out a little bit, it becomes clear that although Mars, the orbit of Mars seemed so distant when we were close, now the orbits of the inner planets, the terrestrial planets, seem vastly eclipsed by these four other orbits. Now these four other planets, they seem to come in fours, now that Pluto has been voted off the planetary island, these four other planets are called the Jovian planets, sometimes called ja gas giants. Gas giants because they're made of gas. Some of them are made of poisonous gas, like sulfuric acid gas and things like that. Uh, some of them are made of methane gas. But uh, these, these planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, uh, also orbit the Sun. They have much more distant orbits and therefore it takes much longer for them to make a complete revolution around the Sun. And unlike the terrestrial planets, the inner four planets, these are gaseous, they're much larger, they're much less dense, and they have many moons. Uh, for instance, uh, Jupiter has, well, it's got so many moons I can't keep track of them. There are 30 or 40 moons, maybe more. Um, Saturn has a whole bunch of moons and it's got some rings. While we're at it, let's go to Saturn. So I'm just going to type in Saturn and say G for go. And here we go to Saturn. Saturn is everyone's favorite planet. And uh, if I look at it from the side, and if I turn off these silly orbits, we see that uh, Saturn has rings. Saturn, like everything else in our solar system, has a day and a night. I'm not sure why there's not a shadow on these rings, but um, and we notice that as we rotate around Saturn, uh, there are many things orbiting Saturn. You can see some of them here. In addition to the clouds of gas and ice, chunks of rock that are orbiting Saturn in its rings, there are moons. And these moons have clever names. Uh, the largest moon of Saturn is Titan, right up here. Titan is thought by many to be uh, maybe the best suitable place on Earth for life outside of, outside of planet Earth. I think I said that wrong. Titan, aside from Earth, would be the next best place for life to exist in our solar system. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's a large moon and it orbits Saturn. Now if I turn that off and get time moving here, speed up time, you can see these things orbiting Saturn. And you can see that the moons that are closer to Saturn have quicker orbits or a shorter period of revolution. The ones that are farther take significantly longer to orbit Saturn, just like the planets do. So each planetary system with its moons is kind of a model of our solar system. As planets orbit the sun, moons orbit planets, and uh, works out pretty well. So I'll slow time back down. Let's go visit Jupiter. I type in Jupiter and I say G for go and we take takes us to Jupiter. Now there's Jupiter. Jupiter is probably everybody's second favorite planet. Uh, it has some some important features. It also has a day and a night. It has stripes. Uh, because Jupiter is a gas giant it doesn't just have an atmosphere, it basically is an atmosphere, and so these swirling clouds of gas form eddies and interesting patterns. There's one persistent pattern that's rather famous, the giant red spot right here, which is thought to be a great hurricane on the surface of Jupiter. Now, maybe one of the more famous 
uh, things about Jupiter is when Galileo first pointed a refracting telescope up at Jupiter, he was able to notice that there were specks orbiting it. Now, I did this as a young lad. I took a, a rather cheap telescope and pointed it at Jupiter, and I was surprised to see that it had some diameter to it that I could notice. It wasn't just a speck. I could see the stripes of Jupiter, and I could see some little dots next to Jupiter. Well, Galileo saw this too, and what he saw were moons of Jupiter. And uh, there are four large moons. If I back out a little bit here, I bet I can see some of them. There they are, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, and there's a whole bunch of other moons. Well, these moons orbit Jupiter, and they're large enough to be seen with uh, a cheap telescope or binoculars, even from planet Earth. And uh, so as we speed up time here on Jupiter, we can see that there's an awful lot of things orbiting it as well. If I turn on the orbits, you can see that, likewise, moons orbiting Jupiter create a little planetary system. Once again, farther moons orbit with a slower period of revolution, Closer moons orbit with a much faster speed and a shorter period of revolution. All right. Now, one last thought. If I go back to the sun, we've learned about terrestrial planets, the inner four planets. We've learned about the Jovian planets, the so-called gas giants. Well, if I'm looking at the sun, and I back off and I see some inner four planets and then I begin to see the other planets fade away. What happens as I get farther and farther into space? Well, can you pick out the sun? Yep, there it is. But it looks just like these other specks. Because if I back off into space a great distance, the sun is just a star like many, many other stars. In fact, the sun is just one of many, many stars in what we believe is a spiral galaxy. This spiral galaxy we call the Milky Way. We call it the Milky Way because if you're in it, remember our sun is one of these specks, if you're in it, if you look one way, you see a whole lot of stars. But because it's a flat spiral, if you look the other way, off this direction or in this direction, you don't see a whole lot of stars. So, for ancient uh, shepherds and astronomers, when they looked up in the sky, they would see a faint band of bright white and kind of a, a line across the sky. And what they were seeing was the outer reaches of the Milky Way galaxy. Milky Way, because it looked like someone splashed milk across the sky. And in fact, the word galaxy sounds an awful lot like lactose and lactic acid and lactose intolerance and all that stuff. So it must be related to milk. So uh, there's our galaxy. It is thought to be a spiral galaxy, and it is thought to be one of many galaxies. In fact, if I fade away from that galaxy, we'll see that there are others. Andromeda is a famous one. The Sombrero Galaxy is one you might want to look up on your in your spare time. So as we zoom back to planet Earth or to the sun, we see that the sun is one of many stars perhaps one of hundreds of billions of stars in a galaxy. But that one star right there is what keeps us warm. That's all I've got for today. Uh, next time we'll check out how to solve problems with Newton's universal law of universal gravitation. That's two universals. Newton's law of universal gravitation. And we'll look at uh, how to solve that on a calculator. We'll see you next time.